Great, so welcome and hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our live event. I hope you're well wherever you are and the sun is shining for you. Um, my name is Amy, for those of you who don't know, I'm one of the customer success managers at the Web Spiders Group and your event moderator for this webinar. And joining me today is, C is our wonderful CEO, Sid. Hi Sid, how are you? Hey, good, good. Thanks Amy, thanks. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. I'm good. The sun isn't shining here, but I wish it was. <laughs> so I hope that you have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. It's great it's to have great. you here. Um, so thank today you. we're going to be talking about um, the case for co-pilot AI chatbots. And we yes. all know that conversational AI is a huge part and a really important part of any company's um, sort of sales strategies and customer service and, you know, answering FAQs and things like that. We've all seen them and probably used them, um, but they are not always the smartest, are they? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're great at answering simple questions um, with simple phrases, uh, but they don't always provide um, responses to the kind of more complex or more um, actual, actual natural um, natural questions and the more the more kind of uh, relaxed conversation that we use in everyday life from human to human. So um, we're going to be talking about how human and AI training is creating um, smarter and more intelligent chatbots um, with a really really high percent uh, accuracy. Uh, what what is the the um, percentage, Sid? Is it it's in the nineties, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, so thanks, thanks for teeing that up, Amy. And yeah. uh, you know, I think I think uh, everyone has already felt uh, artificial intelligence working for them. I mean, the phones, you know, the way the pictures pop up, the way Facebook recognizes when you when somebody uploads a photo that that you are there, but you know, even if you're not tagged, it mm -hmm. recognizes that you were there, etc. Yeah, uh, and and in general, you know, AI essentially is equivalent to automation. And it is the heart of scaling up. I think every every organization, whether it's a startup or even if it's a uh, you know large scale Fortune 500 company, um, you know if they're looking at scaling up, you know AI is part of the equation. Mm. And and the corollary of that is you know the, the the fact is for most of the AI advancement, human AI training is actually at the core of it. Uh, yeah. So what I, what I say, you know, natural intelligence is actually responsible uh, for the artificial intelligence to work so well. And, you know, let me just, uh, you know, go to some other examples before we jump to you know, our topic today of chatbots. So, so you know about, you know, you know, BMW, for example, has had uh, auto parking for a long time now. You know, so many cars give you, uh, you know, uh, you know, they give you ability to do cruise automatic, they self-drive, you know, Tesla can can take as well. I mean, they're regular, different regulations, but I think, uh, you know, self-driving cars are already way ahead. And one thing to understand is that not only are those AI models trained beforehand so that the car algorithm understands when to stop, when to accelerate, when to, uh, you know, turn, uh, but, it, but, but it's constant training. So when the AI models are running, there is a bunch of AI trainers who are monitoring the performance and tweaking the algorithms. And, and that's continuous because the real world situations keep changing, right? So as an example, you know, as you're familiar, Zoe, which is our product, WebSpider's product, we power over 16 malls in, in the UK and France. I think there are three in France and uh, the rest in the UK. And you know situations keep changing. I mean, the last one year has been very different, and so so the AI in the loop is very essential for the whole experience of AI to happen. And I think a lot of people think that it's a programmer's job or it's a coder's job to get AI running, but the fact is that uh, you know over sixty percent of the work is actually in human intelligence teaching an AI model how to behave naturally, and. You know, there are just some of the examples, like for example, lane keeping assist. No, you cannot, you cannot code something to understand. You have to show them uh, what is right and what is wrong. Mm. Uh, and, and then they learn from those patterns. And, and that is essentially the, 
you know the the message we are trying similarly for for you know even uh, facial recognition uh, what what we are seeing here is that you know uh, how it recognizes like in a car whether it's positive negative neutral it's actually done by real human beings you know pretending to smile pretending to laugh pretending to be angry pretending to be stressed and then it the ai model getting trained that okay when your muscles when your cheek muscles frown and when your eyebrows frown then that is stress as an example when you smile is not just you know uh, the expansion of the lips from the side but it's also the cheeks raising um, mm -hmm. because if your cheeks don't raise so there are actually standard codes what they call facial action codes mm -hmm. and this whole process of ai training has to happen before the model goes live as well as after the model goes live for constant renewal for constant correction so it constantly learns or we're constantly showing showing the bots yeah you you have to constantly train it i think that's the uh, you know that's the message here and that's the reality yeah. you know we run so many and and we're coming to chatbots so chatbots uh, you know it's as as i said you know chatbots have gone in fact last in, in our last webinar we showed that chart right it has yeah. gone from 2016 it has it has had a, a ride where people were excited then they were disappointed right yeah. then they actually forgot about it mm -hmm. and then it re, and as the models ai models kept getting stronger in 2020, it actually was a breakout year for chatbots, uh, as as people were, you know, at home, and as retailers, as schools, as education institutes, as as financial services companies, etc., uh, you know, wanted to automate uh, to get that happen. It was actually a breakout year in technology and and so forth. So this just shows that momentum as well, and. The fact is that chatbox can answer 80% of the standard questions. Uh, but what it means is that one in five questions go unanswered. But also what the implication is that if, if, there, is, if there are no humans in the loop, then the 80% of the questions that are answered are actually not satisfactory because the satisfaction levels way back in 2017 was as low as 15%. And that's why when people thought that, well, this is not going to work, it's too complicated. And then it went from a stage of excitement, disappointment to right now, something that's essential in the toolkit for marketers and toolkit for customer experience, uh, you know, departments. Yeah. So, so essentially, you know, we are building up to this, uh, you know, entire uh, story, Amy, is, is to say that all critical AI have humans in the loop. They have before the AI goes live and they have, after the AI model goes live. So you need to have the same situation for chatbots. You cannot just train it before you need to key, you need to have live monitoring. And in fact, the Zoe team, we actually have live monitoring going forward with the bots, right? So that, you know, you can understand. And then when you monitor, you also train so that the next time the same situation happens, you don't have, then a human is not required. It becomes smarter. Yeah. But the real world changes so fast, it, it has new use cases so often that you cannot just deploy a model and leave it. Like it's not like a Microsoft Office, you create it and you leave it mm -hmm. and you can keep using it forever. No, it's, it's, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Uh, and that's essentially the central theme of what we're going to discuss today in this uh, uh, 30 minute uh, uh, quick webinar. The other thing is, you know, the other effect of when you keep training it, what happens is that not only does the AI become smarter, it actually starts to get a personality. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's important, you know, when, when a chat, if, 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 if your email bot or chat bot is, let's say from uh, the, say the income tax department, right? Versus from Sephora, uh, mm -hmm. it should not, it should have different personalities because yes. the people in those, a, 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 peop, a person in the police station or in the government mm -hmm. has a different way of interacting with the check-in clerk at Disneyland, right? Yeah. It's totally different. So they have different tones, they have different personalities, they have sure. different sense. And so AI, AI learns that as well. And this is actually an example uh, where it, where it picked, picked up from the training. And when you ask 
questions that may not be straight off like mm-hmm. i am hungry what should i do or i am feeling lonely what should i do yeah. or where do you live it starts to get a personality of its own yeah and and, and so yeah so yeah, so it's not sorry say, say that sure. i was going to ask you from from a kind of security or safety kind of side of things if it's learning is there a way to obviously monitor that side of things as well yeah you know like like everything for example you there is there are edge cases yeah there and people edge, can catch yeah. out the box yeah there are edge cases where where it does not perform and that's why live monitoring is so important for yeah. people to flag so for example in our chatbots with every response you can say thumbs up thumbs down against uh, a response and okay. then the final as well so you know i mean even humans are not perfect let's let's put it this way i mean you you give me 1000 conversations from a call center or from a human manning the chat and are you going to tell me that there are no errors and no faux pas you know absolutely not uh, i mean just to give you a perspective you know the car for example in which we drive every day is Uh, you know uh, you know if, if you go to you know i don't know the exact number but it is said that it is you know many many times more dangerous than for example even flying uh, yeah. and yeah. and you know so there are all these stats from a percentage point of view mm-hmm. i don't think i think we we get to you know i think we are very permissible permissive of a human making a mistake yeah. and not permissive of a machine making a mistake and i think in the quest for a machine to be 100% accurate we delay advancement so so you know there has there will be edge cases out of 1000 yeah. responses there will be a percentage but that percentage is low and it is going lower day by day and that's because humans are in the loop yeah so, so for example our team we have a large team that that then manages all our ai models centrally mm-hmm. so our customers get economies of scale they don't need to make sure that oh you have five people dedicated manning my chatbot you know yeah. uh, they don't have to spend for that they have we have a common pool of people who are who are training the chatbot constantly yeah so this is actually a, a screenshot from um, you know our uh, you know chatbot which is deployed at uh, as you can guess at grand central which which is which one is that is that bullring i think grand central yeah. bullring yeah. Um, and yeah birmingham and, and as you can see it's a very open question it says i'm just wondering i will be eating tonight at grand central where can i park don't like walking as it's cold lol <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so this is a this is an actual conversation right Yeah. and um, and of course you know no matter what you train you know there's this i mean you can have fixed chatbots so a lot of the uh, customers let's say i've seen a lot of financial services and insurance companies they have like only fixed responses but at the end of the day you have to open up rather than giving them many options you have to open up and start giving them the ability to type you know uh, it could be for so many situations you can have an entirely open chatbot which is ambitious or you could have a partial open chatbot where other than options you you get occasions where but still you know if you have something like this yeah uh, so what happens is that it automatically gets picked up and escalated to a human who's monitoring it mm-hmm. and then as you can see that person is mapping it to uh, the class called parking facilities mm-hmm. and then writes a response so next time something like that or similar to that something happens it recognizes and it learns what was responded and then it responds back yeah and this is what i mean when people will try to outsmart the bot but you're yeah. constantly constantly updating it so the next time it will know see actually this this whole outsmarting business actually is to be honest we are seeing it's dropping because yeah. i think people are not really bothered whether it's a human or ai i mean if you were to for example chat with a sephora bot or chat with a Uh, you know uh, at a at a store on the website or on whatsapp or on facebook messenger you wouldn't it wouldn't bother you whether it's a human or or uh, a machine as long as you were getting what you need yeah, if you're exactly. trying to return an yeah. item and i think yeah in the initial days people people were hellbent on breaking a bot oh let me ask what yeah. do you think of so and so or 
is it raining in you know they, they used to do all that but right now i think most customers are really really focused on actually getting out in the sense that they they focused on getting their customer service done and getting on with their day uh, rather than trying and fool a chatbot so we are we are we see that being declined quite significantly yeah uh, and now that the the 95% accuracy of it and the natural conversation and yeah. by receiving the correct answers more and more with these smarter chatbots it's it, that makes sense they they don't need to do yeah, that so. absolutely so so as you can see you know this is another example of uh, zoe's backend where uh, you know it's these are for example in the initial days uh, you know all expressions are all expressions which are even responded they they are captured and then analyzed so that even if the even if the bot responded they it goes goes through an audit as to what was the level of response what was the management of it and okay. and again this is like uh, for example training right so you can see that uh, uh, you know it goes through different sort of buckets if you if you if you will so you know guest not coming session name family flow map so this is like your private domain you know i think i think it's so important to understand that you know companies that scale up and companies that are, are have longevity the, you know ai also actually indirectly gives you the ability to have all your corporate intelligence in in one place so that it outlasts people it outlasts changes in management or changes in the workforce and and you have the knowledge in one place and and whenever you constantly updating and you're not really making any additional effort you're just trying to serve your customers and yet they are automatically updating you develop an immense uh, you know powerhouse uh, mm. for your for your company yeah just fantastic so this is again you know from a monitoring perspective uh, you know this is just a screenshot from one of our old reports where you can see that you know they are tracking what's important they are tracking what's uh, what is being asked they are tracking how many question how many conversations happened on that hour for example you can see okay on black friday you know this is this on on this specific day there was you know so many 112 different conversation that happened on black friday and this is for one specific bot you can see that on that channel there were 3 3699 conversations mm -hmm. you can see that you know people were asking for snow updates people were asking for christmas etc mm -hmm. so you know overall what does a bot do right it can it can do small talk it can learn it can learn patterns for a b2b situation where you want to have a meeting it can actually schedule a meeting for you because in a b2b situation i think any conversation leads to a meeting in today's world it will probably be a video meeting but you know it could be a meeting face to face meeting uh, and then ai training which is at the heart so so if you see this whole you know this diagonal here with security live agent and ai training this is actually at the heart where the live agent why we have kept it at the center because you cannot not have a human in the loop mm -hmm. i think i think for so this is like a you know a thought sharing session where we are trying to help people understand that no matter what kind of ai model you have you might be having a video detection model you might be having an image recognition model uh, like for example we have customers who have an email bot so when you email a company it automatically understands like in uk for example if you email to i think it's okada right or am i pronouncing okada. it wrong okada so when you email they automatically understand whether it's a compliment it's a complaint it's a feedback and and then and then and then and then redirect based on the text to the right department yeah. so no matter what form of ai you are using you could be using motion ai facial ai you could be doing autopilot of cars you know funny enough the humans are still important yeah uh, and and you know you know and it's important to the extent that you know companies have thousands of ai trainers so if you're doing for example uh, image recognition you know you have you have trainers who are constantly making the ai model understand you know what is a mountain or whether this is a street light or whether this is a stop or whether this is a curb or whether this is a shoulder you know it 
and, and things change. Like for example, the same street at night in the morning or when it's snowing or when it's uh, raining, the same street is almost like a different street from an AI perspective, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it needs, needs to understand all that. The same thing happens in chat. You know, if somebody, if, or an email, because in email, you rarely just write an email uh, with, uh, with your question, right? If you're writing an email, you have a header, you have a footer, you have greetings, uh, you might even have small talk. And then somewhere between the two or three patterns, you, you know, you're probably just saying, can I meet you tomorrow? Or can we meet next week? Or can I speak to you? you know, but there is so much of text. Now, how does an AI understand what's the actual intent of that email? I mean, we've had, and trust me, I've seen those chat. We've had chats that are literally two A4 pages long. Yeah. Because that person is giving their entire history of what happened last year. They're mixing it with their personal life. And you know, the fact that they could not respond and they were not there because so-and-so happened and they had to travel out, etc. Uh, you know, and it kept, you know, I, 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 I still have that copy actually. And, and it, she kept writing and it was literally like a kilometer long. <laughs> and at the end of the, I think it was something to do with returns. Like where is, how do I return address or something like that? And probably it was past the 30 day limit or 60 day limit, you know, you know, I don't, I don't remember the specifics, but yeah. getting the AI to understand that well, and then even having, and that can happen. And the beauty is that can happen. Yes. So, so let me show you some, some things in action, um, uh, you know, towards making this happen. So this is actually an example of a text uh, chatbot. So, you know, we are so focused on uh, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, the millennials are so focused on, but the fact is SMS is the most universal, the first port of call. So this is a chatbot which was implemented for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, and we have done, uh, you, know, a, you know, several events uh, with them where what they do is they do fundraising using a chatbot. Mm -hmm. So what they do is you can, you can pledge your donation via a text message. But if you are not able, but, but if you ask a question, then it will respond back and tell you how do you how to pledge and what you can see from your screen. And in fact, on the right, you see that when the person has donated, um, uh, like the, the purple is the person, right? Who's donating. And so Chris says thousand dollar to help in this fight, Chris. And then of course it, so then it understands that yes, the person has donated because if the person had said hello, for example, it would have understood, or oh, let me give initial instructions. If the person has said, what is this? How does it work? Or if the person has said something else, it would have understood that and given that response. And this is all automated. Yeah. And, 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 and just a small touch you'll see on your side, you know, the person finally says, thank you. And it comes back saying anytime. Yeah. You know? That's and, nice. <laughs> and and this is all real and this is actually in fact you know we let me give you show you another screen um, so these are just examples of how you can use simple sms mm. so text for survey text to our support text to donate uh, text to order i mean this could be text or this could be scan a qr code doesn't matter it's the same thing you know even if you scan a qr code one of the problems is a lot of strangely enough especially in the android world you know, you know, people who are not very, you can say tech savvy, still don't have a, you know, co a QR code reader handy. In, in the iPhone, I think now it makes it handy. And, and when they go to a store, it says, you know, scan this to give a feedback. And they say, oh, how do I scan it? And, you know, but if you tell them, just text it, like texting is a more, I think is a more US centric phrase. But if you say SMS, yeah. uh, they understand straight away. Okay, this is how I do it. Yeah. And this is actually showing you the numbers here. So this is, I mean, as I said, we've done several events, but it started about a year ago, uh, exactly a year ago, actually, as you can see, May 2020. Mm -hmm. And using the tech spot, they raised 400,000, 401,000 to be specific dollars, US dollars, mm -hmm. only using the tech spot in a matter of two hours. Wow. So, yeah. And the best part of it is that they added a component, what we called a follow-up bot, email bot where 
for people who forgot to complete their pledge, the bot also followed them politely and gently, uh, nudging them to complete their donations. Because they always had a situation where, say, if, if 1,000 people have pledged, they had uh, uh, you know, a certain percentage which, which wanted to donate, but either didn't understand how to or, or just forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And just one or two nudges, sometimes three nudges, actually made them complete. And so they had actually a team which used to do that. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, you know, they were, so usually they would say have about 100 people they would need to call and follow up. But now, you know, they were left to 13 people only who had not completed. Mm -hmm. After which time they said, okay, you know, these, these people, we know them, we will just call them personally. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was just an amazing, amazing solution. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. This is another one, uh, you know, you're familiar, probably not too far from where you are. Uh, and this is actually showing active conversations happening. Um, you know, for example, someone, someone saying, how safe is the center? I didn't understand what it is. And this is, again, this is, as you can imagine, this is only one, le you know, one year or around that old, because one year ago, these kind of questions were not asked really before March, 2020. I think up till up till February 2020, I think in most most you know use cases, you know the concept of a mask was alien for most people on the planet. Yes. Right now, when you see somebody without a mask, it's like a shocker. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, you know, just over a year ago, uh, someone with a mask, like, what's wrong with you? You know, it's yeah. why, why do you have a mask on? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, right now in many countries, where's the second mask on? Why don't you have two masks on? Yeah. <laughs> and oh, the, the full face covering, the um yeah, of the course. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that that's that's there as well. So so as you can see that you know humans in the loop is so critical. I think if there's one message you want to take back is that humans is the loop is, uh, loop is essential, and we're just showing you examples. Similarly, if you see, you know, what are the parking options, it's a very open-ended question. And you know, it actually goes back to the database within a, within two seconds. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the parking uh, tariff database because, as you know, the parking tariffs also change. Uh, yeah. The they keep changing it. For example, if there is more availability, you know, they they try and encourage people to park inside the mall versus going and parking somewhere else. So, yeah. which means that if you if you're I don't know if say it's Monday noon or Monday. You know, I'm assuming you know that time it's not very busy. They yeah. might drop it, let's say, from three pound fifty to one pound fifty. Mm -hmm. So, which means that the bot has to learn, interact with your system, and yeah. then give you the answer, not not have a standard uh, template answer. Yeah. It's so, very and, and again, as you can see, uh, uh, you know, these messages like we are quiet right now, so it's a great time to visit. Uh, you know, it's really, uh, you know, it, it just takes it to another thing. level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Similarly, it, 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 and the fact is it also asks a follow on question. So, some, so once you ask for parking, it says, how are you coming? And it mm -hmm. says, okay, they just select a car. And then it actually gives you where, should, where, you know, where is the, how to go about getting, getting to the car park. Yeah. And it gives you a sat nav code as well postcode for the site now. So you can just put your postcode and, and, and go right there. Yeah, great. So and is there a uh, way for the bot to, to ask a follow up question for for sales? So for example, if, if the customer is asking where a certain um, uh, shoe shop might, might be within the mall, could you then um, could the bot then follow up with once you finished your shopping, why don't you check out this cafe to stop for a refreshment from that kind of thing? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And and this is a I cannot read French, but you know again it's multilingual, so yeah. you can see that it's this one is entirely on in in French, and you know we can potentially do almost any language on the planet. Right. So. You know, and then of course now this is this is running off the website, but it, it also runs on Facebook Messenger, mm -hmm. and again at the choice of the customer, you can enable it for WhatsApp, you can enable it for a text message, you can enable it on email. Oh. So if somebody sends you an email, it will read and it will respond back on email. 
That's great. Uh, so it, it just makes, it just acts like a front. And in some situations where the response might be something that you want to monitor first, mm -hmm. you can always, always have, you know, the way you have humans in the loop, behind AI, you can have AI behind a human as well. So you could always have, in some situations we've had, let's say for example, for an emergency service, you may not, you know, when, when you may not be legally allowed to have an automated response. You can actually have a person querying an AI engine to know facts, what is going on. You know, because that person needs access to a database. That person, support person needs a query system to further give a response ahead. So we've had some situations where in the, you know, it's, it's human with the AI and in some situations, and in many situations actually it's AI leading, leading the pack. And, you know, uh, as we come, what, how good are we on timing? Okay, we are just about yeah. there. So, so let me, and, and before we end this webinar, Amy, you know, what, what's really key to understand is that, you know, your AI engine has to integrate with your ERP, with your CRM, you know, if your accounting data, if your financial data is in say SAP or Oracle or, you know, uh, uh, you know on a Intuit kind of a system or Microsoft, if you're using Salesforce or similar, or systems like HubSpot, you know, we give out of the box integrations with all of these systems, uh, you know, using partners like Moonsoft and Zapier. So what, it, as an example, the way I showed you in the parking example, it goes and gets the data. So if, for example, it was a customer query and it says, when will this be delivered? It would go and give you the answer. If it said, okay, what's the amount due? You know, if if an if accounts payable is trying to understand what's will you know what's due, or if someone is trying to say apply for a credit card and it wants to do a credit check, you know, so a bot cannot exist without connections to the to your legacy systems, and and you know that's just the last part I would like to cover. Yeah, that's so. I think I find it. <laughs> fascinating it's so impressive that we have this now and I think every company can use use this in some way um I think it's a no-brainer it's it's it will help in so so many ways so thank you for yeah. sharing all of that with us no, absolutely and and again please uh, you know for all uh, all those who are watching today uh, you know you please feel free to book an appointment at webspiders.com or just email us at hello at webspiders.com that's the parent company of Zoe that's the owner of Zoe, and we are, we, are, we are happy to analyze your use case and come back with an AI model for you, which could be a chat bot, which could be an email bot, uh, or even going to uh, you know, video and image. Uh, and of course, having a team to constantly train it before the launch and after the launch. Uh, and so with our offices globally, including in Asia and Singapore and India, we really do a follow the sun model where you know, we, we're able to provide 24 by seven training, AI training services, along with deploying the bot. So with that, thanks everybody for being here today. I hope you learned something useful. Uh, so till next time, thanks a lot. Absolutely, thank you. See you at our next webinar.